No, but my point is, no, the mafia is an analogy. What I'm saying is that a century ago, mass immigration created the mafia. There was no mafia without high immigration. And my point is that it dried up over the years. It was able to be broken by the government because of assimilation, because of the end of immigration, because the successive generations of people who ended up in the mafia, the sons and grandsons, of Italian and Sicilian, really, immigrants, um, were Americanized substantially because immigration stopped. They were sort of absorbed into the American people, and they lost these sort of Sicilian characteristics. And it's not just Sicilian, but it's sort of an old country suspicion of the outside. You see that in a lot of places. Yeah. Uh, I want to go on that uh, mafia thing. Um, <clears throat> Now, before the Italians were in the mafia, though, it was preceded by the Irish, I believe, and I think before Irish and Jews and, and Jews, own, yeah, yeah, but again, right. they were immigrants. But right. Well, I'm just wondering, though, at the same time, um, to what degree did the fact that you know Jews, Italians, uh, you know, Italian, Irish, and Italians were both Catholic, Jews were Jews, and uh, they were often like, uh, you know, pushed out of society by people who were afraid, who was both either xenophobic or and for religious for reasons. Discrimination, man. Yeah, like I'm saying, like by like. By not by basically not giving them the opportunities by you know like there's the old signs that said no dogs or Irish need to apply by basically I pushing them to the margin. But the, so the same idea though no, there was, by being marginalizing them was it yeah. was it the xenophobic thing yeah. also in the you mentioned the 1920s that was uh, immigration policies you said changed that but at the same time that was also pushed again by the KKK at its prime so yeah and the progressive movement pushed it too it was right. actually the cutoff of immigration was very wide, was supported pretty much by all elements of society except big business. Big business was the only social force that actually succeeded in keeping immigration high for really 30 or 40 years. Every other element of society, including the Klan, which opened in the 20s, actually existed and was a relevant phenomenon, but also the progressive movement at the time, um, the settlement houses, all of that. It was essentially a very, very broad social movement immigration. But your first question was about did sort of, uh, you know, did, did basically the discrimination, is discrimination responsible for immigrant crime? Um, I would say to some degree yes, but no. In other words, what I, I submit that what creates criminal organizations, and my point of using the mafia was the analogy to security, but I mean I'm happy to talk about the crime part. What creates it is sort of outsiderness. Um, in other words, the United States is, and quite frankly, as surprised as this may come to those of you who've taken university sociology classes, has always been the least xenophobic society in all of human history. All of human history. It's not even close. Um, so, outsider status almost certainly does contribute to the outsiders who are now in a new society sort of sticking together, and that's what creates or at least create some of the preconditions for criminal organizations, for gangs and what have you. Yes, I think that's actually true. That's not so much a function of discrimination, though. In other words, something that we can kind of purge ourselves of if only we go to enough re-education classes. That's simply, a, I think, a consequence of otherness. And that when that otherness goes away after a couple of generations, especially if you stop it that the same people, biologically the same people, obviously, don't create the preconditions for that kind of uh, situation because they don't feel other anymore. You see what I mean? I mean, I, you see, the, my answer is the yes other, no. Does the otherness, though, first come from, I mean, it's one thing if you come together, but it, like, even beforehand, even before they came, there was all, always, like, say the Catholics, there, there was already an anti-Catholic sentiment that was made worse by their coming. Well, could it have been the pre-existing sentiment push them more, like, push the Irish more together. Yeah, I mean, like, more of a security sense. Maybe they had to feel it out of a security sense, too, you know, because they're in a strange land and they're being, you know, attacked. Would that be, you know? I mean, no. Right. I mean, the Irish and the Jews had very weak criminal organizations that the Mafia wiped out. Uh, what about that. Prohibition, were, then? I, I just say, like, Prohibition also pushed up organized crime. Could that have that's been? That's a whole different thing. No but, like, could that have been, like, Italians came as Prohibition came and then there was more incentive then? 
I don't know, maybe. I mean, that's not really sort of a long line, but maybe you and then you in the back. Yes, sir. You have plenty of chance. Right. Find it back. You go ahead. All right, this is a kind of a two part one. Um, First off, there's been some criticism um, of your organization, Centers for Immigration Studies. They said, it, uh, I've heard reports that it was founded by, and founded by John Tanton, who was a uh, white supremacist. Ha, is that true? Are, are those true, and has that affected the uh, mission of the center? Uh, no and no. Um, I don't know too much about Dr. Tanton. I've met him a number of times. I'm, I'm not qualified to judge the claims that you know people are making about him, and frankly, I don't believe most of the people and don't trust those who make those claims. Nonetheless, uh, we were a spin-off, a sort of an outgrowth of a group called FAIR, Federation for American Immigration Reform, that he actually did start. So in a sense, we were kind of a spin-off, but that was 20 plus years ago. And uh, we're an independent group, we do our thing, they do theirs. We're a, research organization as opposed to an advocacy group. And we have a position, but we don't do lobbying on Capitol Hill, that kind of stuff. So sort of yes and no. Okay. Another thing is uh, currently you've been invited by the group Young Americans for Freedom. Right. They were recently named a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center. Well, right. Uh, no, no, yeah. the, the Montgomery Advertiser in Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama Advertiser, which is where the SPLC is based in Montgomery, Alabama, did a long series on the SPLC. This is a regular newspaper, not some politically oriented newspaper. Mm -hmm. And basically they concluded that it was a money-raising money scam. Um, so I gotta tell you, I am not even in the slightest interested in what the SPLC has to say about anything. That's just, Are you I wouldn't right. trust them as far as I could. This is, I'm, I'm yeah, not gonna say that everything, you know, that everything they talk about is necessarily illegitimate, I don't know. But nothing they say can be trusted or Th Then can I ask you some of the things Yaf has said? Um, yeah, a few I'm days not, no, a few I'm days not. ago, though, they posted this one, one thing. Um, there's a story Sorry. in the state news letting, about I'm, a Chicano I'm and Latino that, study program. They game. called it, uh, Cal Bristow, the person who introduced you, referred to as a doctorate of savagery. He posted an game. image of two Native Americans yes, sir, attacking a white woman. Yes, sir, in the back. 